YouTube world, it's me, Leilani Joy, and I'm back again with a brand new episode of Art New Vogue, my video art blog where I document my creative process and give you guys some tips and tricks along the way. I'm excited to bring you another edition of the 78 Tarot Extravaganza. And this year I was assigned the card of justice and I'm really, really excited about this one for a lot of reasons. And I won't go too into depth about any sort of cultural or political reasons why it's important to me, but you guys get the gist. But this deck is also meaningful because the theme of this deck this year is ecological and all things to do with nature and the earth and maybe how we've hurt it, maybe how we can help it, how we can heal it. And so those themes are also super important to me and they're all gonna be wrapped up in this piece, Justice, that I'm gonna do this year. And I wanna go big. I decided I'm gonna paint bigger than I usually do for these. I'm gonna do an 18 by 24 acrylic piece. And without further ado, I'm gonna jump in and show you my thought process and the painting process because, you know, I know everybody just fast forwards all the talking heads on YouTube now. It's like, get to the dang point. We just want to see the action. <laughs> so since 2020 has been so crappy, let's just get to the good part. See you soon. So whenever I start a new tarot card design, I always kind of like to start with the Rider weight classic tarot cards and kind of see what's been done already. And in the classic version of Justice, we see this sort of royal figure that's holding a sword and sort of the scales of justice. And I liked this strong sort of character, but I really wanted to do more of a female warrior instead of just like a queen sitting in a chair. So I also started um, thinking about Lady Justice and um, sort of that classic um, idea of like a blindfolded justice character, but I wanted to have like my character tearing that blindfold off as if she's no longer blind and she's coming to, um, you know, serve justice. And I wanted to have a sword and some kind of interesting armor. So I started looking at um, sort of armor designs and I really liked these delicate kind of patterns and things like that. And when I was doing this piece, this was also like the time when the Australian fires were going on, which I was just devastated by. And since this deck was um, really about um, ecology and earth energy and stuff, I wanted to work that in as in this character is also wanting justice for how we've treated our planet and also a little bit of uh, my feelings towards social justice. I'm, you know, in America during this time, there's a lot of turmoil and things going on. And so this character sort of embodied all that for me and brought me to um, a few different thumbnails here that I did um, using Photoshop and a little combination of Procreate. And I actually let my patrons on Patreon vote on these thumbnails and it of course it ended in a tie so I decided that they were both right and decided to combine two thumbnails which sometimes is is really the genius light bulb idea and create this final sketch which is going to become my painting so as I said thinking about fires and um, sort of uh, destruction that kind of thing so I was really thinking a lot of a hot red, orange, those kind of colors, which I don't paint with that often. So I decided that was gonna be my palette for this piece. And I'm gonna start by spray painting my, um, my wood panel, and then I'll show you my transfer and my whole process in creating my version of Justice. My sprayed board is dry and I have attached my transfer drawing that I've blown up and printed out large on 11 by 17 paper so she's all ready for transfer. I always love this part because you can kind of start to see the painting in its actual size and living breathing life and um, so from here I'm going to do actually a series of masking techniques and spray paint and some traditional paint um, because I've got a lot of these just large shapes which just you know why not spray paint it in instead of painstakingly doing it with a brush I just kind of like that clean flat look so I'm I've made a list actually kind of thinking about this like um, I like to describe it as like stacking 
construction paper on top of each other, like collage, because it's very important what order you spray paint things in. So in this case, I'm gonna spray paint um, my white color over this whole area, and I'm not gonna worry about the face, actually, because I'm going to then mask that and um, paint on top of the white shape, if that makes sense. Um, and I like to try to hide the seams of my spray paint, so I'm gonna hide the seams along her, the top of her armor here. So you'll see this in the mask that I've applied already. So I cut out a mask um, on my frisket, and you can kind of see it's got matte medium on it to seal the edge. And um, so this is just gonna be the hair shape, and then I'm gonna hide that seam, like I said, into the armor. So I'm not gonna worry about the face, because that can be a completely different mask on top. Um, the only thing I kind of warn against is um, being careful how many layers you do of spray paint, especially because then you start to get different um, levels. Like you could get it to be really, really thick, like almost like, like I said, construction paper sticking out, and that might be fine depending on how thick you paint and stuff. Um, but that's kind of just something to watch out for. So I'm gonna go spray paint this color, and which I'm using a, um, it's actually not pure white. I'm gonna be using white orange, which is barely barely like a drop of orange and white because um, I kind of just want to keep the palette a little bit keyed warm so it's not quite so stark shockingly white and so let's see how this goes here I really hope this looks how I think it's gonna look because honestly I could not really see what I was doing it was really um, hard to see the frisket oh, oh. That's so satisfying check it oh my god this is my this is my guilty pleasure peeling oh my gosh oh that's so clean I love it. All right, let's get the rest of this off here. In speed mode. So I've got some, I've got my Stay Wet Handy Palette that I'm using today. This thing's seen better days um, but I mixed or I haven't mixed yet but I've got some colors and this thing is kind of great because you can it's like a palette for acrylics that has a little sponge underneath and you wet this thing and then there's there's actual palette paper that's supposed to come with but I ran out of it so I'm just using like regular palette paper and then you can put a lid on this to keep your colors dry and it just kind of lets you mix a little bit longer so I've got um, I've got some alizarin crimson, I've got some burnt sienna, burnt umber, I've got some violet and um, um, light orange and white and that I'm going to be kind of using to mix my uh, colors for my portrait here. And I also have a little water spray bottle too so I can kind of spray those colors and um, work with them a little bit longer. So, um, like any other traditional painting idea, I'm going to start uh, with the shadows. So I've got those kind of drawn in here, 
and then I'm going to work dark to light. Now that's the opposite. If you're painting in watercolor, you would work light to dark. Um, but since acrylics, you're like layering on top of one another. I mean, you can, you could, I guess, do it the opposite way. But it's a little bit, I just find it's a little bit harder to make your brain think that way. So I kind of like to work from the uh, background to the foreground, if that makes sense. So things that are sinking back a little bit, like under the chin here, um, would be back. And then the other things are going to be on top or and or coming forward. Well, let's um, zoom out for a second and take a look at where we are with this. And do you do? there we have it. There's my little video thing. It looks better far away, I think, actually. Face needs quite a bit of work, so I'm going to keep working on her portrait. But I'm loving the skirt, I'm loving where the armor's going and the hair. And yeah. this music I found for this piece it seems like so fitting and it also sounds like a Zelda game and I am not mad at that So as my final narrative element here, I have Justice holding her blindfold fiercely in her fist and it is just flying off. She's torn it off her face and she is coming for you. Well, my piece, Justice, is almost finished now. And before I show you how she turned out, I just want to say thank you for watching. Thank you for continuing to support me, especially during COVID. Um, every time you shop in my shop or support my Patreon, it's like just so incredibly appreciated, especially when uh, it's so tough out there. And supporting artists and small business, sometimes we get hurt the most in these trying times, so it's really, really appreciated. I have a couple of new tiers on my Patreon where you can get a shout out on a future video, or you can get a critique from me. I'd be happy to critique, critique your art. I'm really nice, I swear. I won't give you an F or anything. <laughs> Unless you want me to go hard and difficult because then I will I'll put my my teacher hat on and get really fierce and mean with you
you know. <laughs> anyway, this original piece is now available to purchase and you can find her in my Etsy shop or you can contact sales at leilanijoy.com if you would like a flexible payment plan. I'm super easy about that, whatever works best for you. I also have deluxe prints of these in my Etsy shop. I have eight by tens and I have stickers too. So if you love justice and you certainly should, everyone should love justice, um, then you should check this out in my Etsy shop right now. So thank you guys for sticking with me and I hope to see you on another episode very soon. Bye-bye.